So if you've been wondering how I made these super detailed spreads in my sketchbook with a range of mediums used to create them, today in this video, I'm finally gonna talk about all of the different tools I use from art tools to even the technical tools I use to film these videos. So first, let's get straight to the point. I use this sketchbook to make all of my recent spreads and this is just none other than a regular schmegular Piccadilly sketchbook that you could find at Target. So this is a really cheap sketchbook. It really does not cost a lot of money, but for me, I just want to get started on making these sketchbook spreads and these videos, which is why I was like, I'm not going to spend time looking for a new sketchbook. I'm going to work with what I already have. So that's why I just use this one and whatever happens to the spreads based on the quality of the pages will happen. So that's why I don't think too much about smudging or bleeding. But overall, I will say this sketchbook has been able to handle most mediums that I work with other than maybe Copic markers and ink because those can definitely bleed through. But I feel like that's pretty common for a lot of sketchbooks that are not built for that. So for the time being, I've just been working with what I got and I still feel like I can make awesome pages. My second most used medium or tool is going to be these Utrecht colored pencils, which no longer exist. I think the closest dupe to this now is the Blick Art Supplies colored pencils, but I've even heard that Prismacolor is even better. Again, I think that these were really great colored pencils that served me throughout high school and college. However, I'm also pretty aware that they're probably just, you know, average and they just perform and do what they need to do. I actually just like the color selection in here, but if you for some reason want to try out something similar to what I've been using. I've been using the Utrecht ones and the Blick Art Supplies would be the closest second bet. I also forgot to mention as a backup colored pencil collection, don't mind the bag, but I have a collection of Arteza color pencils that I've also been using because I just felt like I needed a little bit of other colors that were not provided in that set that I got. And you know, these I will say work just as well. Honestly, they feel pretty similar to the Utrecht color pencils. So try these out too, if you're looking for another alternative. Then next, my most used pens for sure are the Sakura Micron Pigma pens because these are the pens I've used, again, throughout all of my portfolios for school and whenever I drew in my sketchbooks back then, I always stuck to these Micron pens because honestly, I just never had a problem with them. They do what they need to do and I like the line weight for each pen. So I got the variety pack, which has ones from 0.05, up to like the one and brush option, just because I like having a variety and I got two of them because I know these will go out really fast. So next, I have also been using these Koi Sakura watercolor pocket field sketch boxes, which are just kind of this little watercolored box that allows you to bring this with you when you travel. And it's just has different colors that you can use and you can use this entire container as the whole like, color mixing set as the area to mix your colors. And that's how I've been painting a lot of the different spreads in my sketchbook, because I love that this is just transportable. You could bring this with you wherever you go. And honestly, I think that the colors have been working very fine in my sketchbook. Again, I had this since I was in high school and I'm still using it today. So I think that it's been working pretty well. And it even has a little thing back here that you could use and hold like a little um, palette for you to paint. So if you're wondering what I use with those watercolor pens, I actually use these Arteza brush pens or watercolor brushes, which basically allows you to fill in this tube area with water and you can press this button to squeeze out the water as you work so you can kind of disperse some water out without having a cup and then you get into that whole like accidentally drinking paint water situation so this helps save the mess and it also is very convenient for traveling and since this is a sketchbook about travel and i may be traveling at some point with this whole sketchbook and i may need to draw in it well this is when these brushes and that water watercolor set comes in handy. So I would say that this medium is actually my favorite, but I actually can't really use it in the sketchbook. I try to use it, but I use it sparingly because it bleeds a lot. And that is definitely 
the Copic markers or alcohol-based markers, and these are the ones from Arteza. I just kind of put them all in this jar just to make it a lot easier to work with and see all of the different names and colors. But this is the grayscale version because as a storyboard artist, I work in grayscale a lot. When I do comics, thumbnails, grayscale is where I go. And eventually I think I will broaden out to different colors. But again, we're working with what we have. I really enjoy these different tones. They come in different types of gray tones, like warm grays, cool grays, neutral grays. Like sometimes you might get them mixed up, so be careful, but that's what these color indicators are for and you can also test them out before you try them but I would say that this is a very good beginner set for someone just working in grayscale but be careful with paper that might be too thin because these definitely bleed. Then next, I'm not really proud of these products that I have because they're kind of impulse buys that I just got last minute and they are these children's, I think they're for kids, wash paints and paint markers from Target, from the brand Mondo Llama. So I actually don't think they're like the worst thing ever. Like they do what they need to do because I just needed these last minute. So what was happening was I was actually working on this spread of my sketchbook and it's the one where I was drawing like, you know, when you're getting off a plane and you're just so like wowed by everything surrounding you. And I realized I needed gouache paint and I don't really have them. I do have like some old glittery gouache paint, but I don't have regular ones and I needed it that day because I was ready to film. So I door dashed these from Target. So I got these Mondo Llama gouache paints and I've used it on, you know, the spread that is shown here. And these have been, again, fine. If you need to lay down your basic colors, you just need to get a color across. These just do the job, but they're not like anything that's the most amazing mind-blowing thing in the world, but the packaging is cute. Then this one uh, is the Mondo Llama paint markers, which also, again, they work fine. Are they Posca markers? No, I actually don't own Posca markers. And I really needed something of that equivalent to just kind of lay down like some bold whites because sometimes when I draw a illustration, I want to put some white refinements on it, like a sparkle in the eye, just some dots of white to make stars or something. And all I really needed was this one, but only this entire pack was available. So I got this entire pack just for this one pen. But you know, I will try to use these more in some of the future videos, but in the future, I do plan to invest in those Posca markers eventually. So, and if I'm saying Posca or Posca, I'm sorry, I don't really know, but those are markers I've been looking into and would like to try out someday. Then lastly, these are just some like, minor tools, I guess. I've been using these erasers that I got from Daiso, okay? These are from Daiso and they help erase the colored pencils whenever I make mistakes. Nothing special, they do their job and that's all there is to them. And then for any of you who have watched my Twitch streams, cause I do sometimes stream my sketchbook spreads on Twitch. So check that out in the links below if you would ever like to catch me on a stream. But I literally use my own makeup like eyebrow pen sharpener to sharpen my color pencil. So my art and my face are the same thing at this point. So this is what I use, nothing special, just use this to sharpen it, get the job done, we're good. So moving on, let's go to the setup that I've been using to film all these videos. So here is the general setup that I've been pretty much filming all of my videos on. I just get these backsplashes from just any store. You could just get it online. If you look up like wallpaper or photo backdrops, anything will do. I personally just like using basic colored ones. And there are also these lights that I got from Niwer, which allow you to kind of just cast some light on the area that you're working. So normally I would lay out all of my materials here, just like this. And this is how I start working on my stuff. So this is pretty much the place where I've created a lot of these sketchbook spreads. And if you're wondering how I film these, this is what this little dongle here is where I attach my camera, which is currently filming this video, so I can't show it here. And this whole stand in general is also from Niwer, where basically it allows you to attach these light panels and it also allows you to hook up the camera here and you can always adjust it to these little other configurations that are available. And then lastly, up here, is another top-down camera shooter, but for the phone that I've been using, 
where basically this whole arm allows me to put a little claw to hold on to my phone here. And basically when I am also recording a video for YouTube, I can also stream for Twitch. So basically when I'm working, I can have my tripod camera, I can have my regular camera here, and then I use this arm and bring it down here and have people watch me stream my sketchbooks. And then lastly, if you must know, I use, of course, my this is my iMac that I use to edit my videos. I use Final Cut Pro, and then here's my Cintiq 22 inch that I use to, you know, just draw and do other artwork, but hey, I still kind of use it to help edit to these sketchbook videos, but that's pretty much what I use. And of course, your handy dandy Yeti mic to record the voiceovers. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that maybe I introduced some art supplies that you could start using now that it's 2024 and hopefully we have some new art goals going on. And if you need some suggestions, I hope that these supplies are some that you can try out. So check them out in the links below if you would like to get more details on the supplies I've been using. But otherwise, I will see you all in the next one. So thank you for watching and see you later.